extreme music is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's meant to be alienating. It's meant to push people away. It's meant to be as intense as possible. If you were trying to write a song that sounded sweet and loving and inclusive and all those kinds of things, you might want to follow a pretty familiar set of chord changes. Uh, you can look into theory and understand better how we have associations with different keys and, uh, well, uh, sounds being laid in a certain order. Extreme music does the opposite. It tries to pick on the elements that we encounter the least in other styles of music. So um, if extreme music is incredibly daunting, way too much, uh, that's the whole point. So um, when you listen to pop music, the idea is they have uh, readily identifiable hooks, quote unquote, right? Familiar parts of a song. And so many songs do have the exact same chord changes with slightly different arrangements and, of course, different lyrics. Uh, but we have a pretty repetitive machine going on in the pop industry and always have. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I love a great pop song. But there's got to be something for the other folks, right? So <clears throat> one of the first things you're going to notice is the use of odd meters. Okay, so in America, we tend to listen to music that is in what we would call 4-4. Four, four. One and two and three and four and, right? To be as boring as possible to explain that. Once you start wandering off of that familiar pattern, uh, really weird stuff starts to happen. Um, so what can happen is you'll be listening to extreme music and you have no reference point whatsoever for what's happening. That is very much by design. So if I could make a suggestion, don't try to understand it, okay? When you're first being exposed to these styles of music, don't try to count it. Don't try to figure out what key it's in. Don't worry about where it's going, where it's coming from. These are abstract art pieces, and I want you to think of it that way. Pretend you're going to an art gallery, okay? You're not sitting down to listen to your favorite toe-tapping, predictable song where you probably know what the next lyric's going to be, even though you've hearing it for the first time. This is something to be exposed to. This is something to be immersed in. This is a new culture. This is a new way of thinking. This is a new way of expressing yourself. So the first thing you're going to have to do is let it happen to you. Don't try to control it. Um, let it wash over you. Okay. And what happens when you hear music a few times is you will start to pick out things that you can kind of quote unquote, hang your hat on. Okay, even in the most extreme music, there's usually a lyric that comes back, if you can understand the singer at all, um, or some familiar melody or, or something that'll help you snap it all together. Okay, so um, moving over to lyrics. Okay, this is a major departure for most people, people that don't listen to music. Okay, people that sing pop songs, people that they know all the songs on the radio, they don't know anything about instrumentation. The only thing they can relate to is the lyrics, of course, because they're not guitar players, they're not drummers. Um, so why in the world would they be identifying with those things, right? So the other thing is, as fans of extreme music, we have to be forgiving of people that are not, okay? And they don't all have to be. And in fact, it's kind of nice, we got something to ourselves, right? So the absence of ability to understand a singer is another thing you're gonna wanna swallow early on, okay? Um, in many cases, in most cases, a lot of my very favorite bands, I have to Google the lyrics and guess what? 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you couldn't do that. So very early on, I accepted the fact I was not going to know 98% of the lyrics to a lot of my favorite songs. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Um, context is everything. You'll find in a lot of songs, you'll pick out just a couple words. And that's kind of all you need, okay? The band is expressing themselves in a way that if you yourself have ever hurt or whatever is very relatable, okay? You'll figure out what they're talking about with very, very little information, okay? So, uh, again, it's, 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 it's not the 
the band is trying to tell you a story, right? They're painting a picture. Again, it wants you to think of it that way. So you may not understand mathematically how the songs are coming together. Again, very much by design. You might not understand the singers. Again, very much by design because depending on the way a band is mixed, um, it couldn't be more obvious. Uh, Converge, I think, is a great example of that, especially the Jane Doe album. Um, that's one of my favorite records, and I can pull out about five words Jacob yells on that entire record. Don't care. So um, don't try to control it, uh, and don't expect anything out of it. It's coming to you. You don't have to go to it. The next point I want to move to, we're going to be able to touch on because I'm assuming you guys are guitar players, which is why you'd be on a guitar page, or at least you have interest in it. So the lower you tune a guitar, okay, the slower the strings are actually oscillating. So when you hit that string, if you look at it under intense lighting, you'll notice that the string's actually moving, right? So that's sending off a wave that you're hearing at a particular frequency, which we interpret as a note, okay? So the lower and lower and lower and lower and lower you tune that string, it slows way down, okay? So if you're playing a low tuned eight string, for example, and you try to just like play really fast licks on the low strings, you will hear nothing. It sounds like mud. It just sounds like noise in a room. So the lower you tune, uh, it seems that you inherently need to slow down. You have to slow the music way down. Otherwise, you just lose the whole thing. So the biggest thing people get wrong is the lower you tune, uh, you have to rely more on rhythm than melody, right? Because the melodies become less discernible. So because the music becomes more rhythmic, it becomes groovier. So one of the biggest things you can do is just kind of find the groove of the thing. And what you'll realize is yeah, it's a low tune, very distorted guitar, maybe somebody's screaming, or maybe not, but it grooves, right? And you can just kind of like bounce your head to it. I find a lot of really heavy music has more to do with hip hop than rock and roll, right? So um, just to pick on a band that, that I know a bit, Born of Osiris did a really good job way back when, like when I was a kid. Right, and I grew up like a half an hour away from these guys. Um, they figured out very early on they could play with the elements of odd metered extreme music, which there was a lot of in the Chicago suburbs. Like when I was growing up, there were a lot of hardcore bands in my area uh, that were way wilder than like Born of Osiris's, for example. But what they figured out is they could play in a style that is now called break core break core, right? We're going to throw around some terms that you certainly don't need to know, but why not, you know, keep you abreast of them. The idea there is they're playing in 4-4, but they play these syncopated rhythms, which means the different people in the band playing different instruments could be playing pieces that are not similar in time signature, but when stacked together, it all makes sense. So they're all playing in 4-4, but because you're playing these right kind of a thing, you get the head bob and groove, and it sounds all you know weird and twisted, but it's just in four four man, right? So they're just subdividing a common time signature. And uh, the joke I used to make was, you don't have to have a degree from MIT to understand what's going on there, right? So, um. There are more approachable styles of quote unquote hardcore music. And then we really start falling down into some really weird stuff. So uh, of course you, you really can't talk about this without bringing up Meshuga, right? So the thing is they've been around forever. I mean, forever since the late eighties. Okay. So most people that I run into are under the impression Meshuga must've popped out within the last 10 years or something. Sorry, dude. <laughs> They've been around since day one. So the thing about Meshuga is that music is 100% rhythmic, 100% rhythmic. I mean, there, there's little passing melodies in their tunes in Bleed. I mean, there's, there's a cool passing melody that happens, but that stuff is 100% groove oriented. 
Okay. So it's a different way to consider music. It's riff based, right? So, um, you're just going to have to recalibrate your ear for what you're listening for and what you're experiencing. So as this series continues, and this was a part one, and I hope it wasn't too boring, this is an overview of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to cover things like the Dillinger Escape Plan, Converge, Animals as Leaders. We're going to do listeners' guides to very specific bands and what's going on in there and what I think makes them so special. Because that's the thing. 15 years ago, okay, I started this channel and began bringing on baritone scale seven strings, okay? Very close friend of mine custom built me an eight string because they really weren't around at the time. You just couldn't get the specs that Shannon Cotton built into my guitar, which I think is going to be on this page soon. So he had to make it for me. So from very early on, Okay, we were trying to be like pioneers. I never did the stuff that Misha did, but guess what? He and I were tagged together in the same stuff on YouTube early on because we both played angle amplifiers. He ditched his after like five minutes, but I still have mine. But the point is, we're going to show you all the different ways to skin the cat. There are so many different great forms of extreme music, and I can't wait to talk about what those guys were able to pull out of thin air. Okay. So, um, this music is, is, it is, it's on the cutting edge of what's going on in the world. So that's why I have the respect that I have for so many of these people, because they truly are pioneers. They didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. They didn't want to recycle ideas. They wanted something new for their generation. My very favorite quote about music ever, and I told Misha this, Les Paul had said, if your mama can't tell it to you on the radio, then what's the point? I only want to listen to music that doesn't sound like anything else, and I hope you do too. So if you want to learn more about these bands, this kind of music, guitars, stick around this channel. I think we're going to start seeing some interviews and some other really cool stuff soon. So please... Come back again. We love you.